Hello everyone, welcome to the Django tutorial series. In this tutorial step, we're going to work on Behavior Driven Development, or BDD, testing. BDD is an agile software development technique that encourages collaboration between developers, QA, and non-technical or business participants in a software project. Let me give you a small difference between acceptance testing and behavioral driven development. According to Browser Stack, in the acceptance test driven development technique, a single acceptance test is written from the user's perspective. It mainly focuses on satisfying the functional behavior of the system. Acceptance test driven development is very similar to BDD, behavioral driven development. However, a key difference between them is BDD focuses more on the behavior of the feature, whereas acceptance test driven development focuses on capturing the accurate requirements. Before moving ahead, make sure you have installed Google Chrome and Chrome Driver on your machine. The official website of Chrome Driver is being displayed on your screen. You can download it from here. As of now, I will be downloading version 89, which is a stable release. Before installing Chrome Driver, make sure to check your Google Chrome version. Both need to be aligned. After downloading the Chrome driver, I'm going to unzip it and move it to user local share. That's slash user slash local slash share. Next, I will make the Chrome driver as an executable along with creating symbolic links. Okay, we've successfully set up the Chrome driver. Now I will be installing the Behave Django Python package. Behave is a behavior driven test framework that is largely similar to other BDD test frameworks such as Cucumber, Specflow, Cucumber JVM, etc. We will also install Selenium WebDriver. Selenium WebDriver is one of the most popular tools when it comes to web UI automation. The Selenium framework can be used with a wide range of programming languages, such as Python, Java, C Sharp, and more. I will be creating a .behaveRC file in the project root. I will pass the path where my acceptance tests are stored so our test runner can pick up the tests. Next, I will create two directories and name them as features and steps. Feature files contain high level descriptions of the test scenario in a simple language. This language is known as Gherkin. Gherkin is a plain English text language. Feature files consist of the following components. Feature, 
A feature would describe the current test script, which has to be executed. Scenario. Scenario describes the steps and expected outcomes for a particular test case. Given. Specif this specifies the context of the test, test to be executed. When. When specifies the test action that has to be performed. Then. This is the expected outcome of the test and can be represented by then. After we are done with the feature, we'll move ahead with steps. A step definition maps the test case steps in the feature files introduced by given when then. It executes the steps on the application under test and checks the outcomes against expected results. First, I'm going to do the necessary imports. After that, I will begin implementing the step definition. Behave uses step under IMPL as the function name by default and accepts context as an argument. We will be using context to pass Selenium information. Keep following up with me, you are going to enjoy it.
Okay, we have completed the first step. I am on the Django admin. Let me tell you what's going to happen. The Chrome application is going to open the Django admin login page and will pass username and password in the input fields. Then finally, click on the login button. This is what happens when a user tries to log in to Django admin. We are automating the manual stuff. I will be installing an XPath plugin from Google Web Store. XPath stands for XML Path Language. XPath uses a path-like syntax to identify and navigate nodes in an XML document. This plugin will be very helpful in finding elements in our HTML page, and th those are not having too much experience working with XPath. Let's move on to the next step definition.
We're done with our stub definition. Next, we need to set up our test environment before running the application. If you want to dig deeper into this configuration, I would suggest to follow the link as shown on the screen. As you can see on line number three, we are directly passing the value in Django settings module. Make sure in the future you try to pass information through the environment variable. Next, I'm going to paste some settings which I've used earlier in my previous projects. Don't worry, the entire source will be available on GitHub and I will share the link in the description. As you can see on my screen, whenever the test runner is initiated, the base test class is going to create a, a sample user and an organization in our test database. Before running tests, make sure you have added behave under Django in the installed under apps. Restart your server if required, then click on tools run manage.py task. I type behave and press enter. Looks like something is broken. Let me fix it.
Great, finally, our test scenario has successfully passed. As you can see on my screen, a notification is appearing saying, Sentry is appearing to send 35 pending error messages. These are the errors which got raised during the test execution. You can disable Sentry while your tests are being executed in a CI CD pipeline. I hope you got a basic understanding of behavior driven development. This was a short introduction to BDD, and if you're interested to know more about BDD, then follow the link as shown on the screen. I will also mention the link in the description. In the upcoming video, I will show you how to deploy the application inside a Docker container.